Oh, hi. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? I, I must have nodded off there. Welcome to the Palda Tech live stream. It's going to be a shorter one today. We're doing a live workshop on white balance. But as you can see, I have something very important to take care of very soon. And I can't stay in the studio that long, as much as I would love to. So I will be leaving very soon. But I just, I couldn't go into the weekend without showing you a little bit about the Fujifilm white balance. So let's do that. All right. First of all, um, question of the day. Are we live? I don't know. I have to check. One second. Let me see. Are we live? Yeah, we are. We got Francisco, Paul. We got people on the stream. That is so cool. Okay. So question of the day. Can you see the monitor? Yes, you can. All right. Wonderful students. Are we ready to do this? Today, we're talking about Fujifilm white balance. And frankly, what is white balance? Why would you want to set it on the camera? What's the point, right? Well, it basically, white balance and setting your white balance is sort of the act of making sure that your camera is correctly referencing the right color temperatures in your scene. And that's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. What do I mean by that, right? Well, suppose you have an object in your scene that is white. Like, for example, uh, I don't know, like uh, this bullhorn. You have this bullhorn, okay? You have it in your scene, and let's say your camera, let me get into the camera mode here, one second. All righty. So let's say you have in your camera white balance, and I will put it here. All right, let me show you what the camera sees. Okay, so here, Have a look at this. Not so good, not so good, right? You see this as white. You know that this bullhorn is white, okay? But the camera is not correctly set with regard to white balance. You see that? And it doesn't look good. And that's the kind of thing that makes me mad, bad, and sad. So we need to fix that. And in part of understanding correct white balance, is understanding one very fundamental fact about all cameras, okay? All cameras. Are you listening? All right, wait, hold on a minute. I gotta make sure that the, um, okay, well. <laughs> all right, here's, here's the deal. Um, the problem, the problem is this. Your camera's not very smart. Your camera's not very smart, right? Your camera is what I said. And because of that, your camera really misinterprets what black is, what white is. And so you have to step up and tell the camera. A lot of times, if you're taking shots out in a snowy white background, your camera may screw that up because your camera sees the world in shades of gray, 18% gray and so forth. So because of that, right, you do need to tell it what the white balance is. Are we still live? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Very cool, we're still live. All right, okay, moving right along. There are four ways to set up the white balance in your Fujifilm camera. We're gonna go over them real quick. I'm gonna have some homework for you, so pay attention, all right? The first way is automatic, and that is generally the most common way. That's the way the camera is configured when you buy it and it's default to that. And frankly, for stills, that is not a bad setting to keep it in. Just keep it in automatic, okay? And that looks like this right here. So if you go in, to your white balance is always in the IQ section, image quality, here it is, and it's right here. You see that says auto right there, the first one, the one that, not the first one, but the it's on the second one down on an X-T4, but wherever it is in yours, it's the one that says auto, okay? That's important, all right? Okay, so the next way, and, and by the way, you can just set it in auto and forget about it. And most of the time, you're gonna have pretty good white balance in your shots. Fuji does a great job at calculating white balance. So no complaints there. So you know you have that option. That's option number one. Option number two are these pre-installed, prefabricated recipe scenes. I never use these things, but you should be aware of two things. 
Number one, they exist on your camera. And number two, you can act, even though they're pre-installed, you can actually customize them even further. Check this out, okay? If you look, have a look at this. Right down here, daylight, shade, fluorescent lights, right? Oh my goodness, you can even be underwater, blub, 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 right? You can be underwater and use that one, okay? But let's say, right, you're in the shade, you're standing in the shade, right? And you're standing in the shade with your camera, so you put it in the shade option, okay? If you do, on every single one of these presets, every single one of them, there's a little arrow pointing to the right. Do you see that? And you can simply press the D-pad and go boom, and you can further shift the color, okay? You can further shift the color. So it is a little confusing because, let me get to the next one. Kelvin, that's not really a prefab one. Kelvin allows you to dial in the exact Kelvin temperature of the light. So for example, if you go back into the camera and you look at K for Kelvin, if you go over here, look at this. You, you can dial it in what it is. You see that? Okay, and you can rotate the command dial to change the numbers. I have a confession to make. I don't like the usability of this Kelvin thing at all. I find it confusing to adjust these numbers. And because of that, I almost never use it. But I want you to be aware that it's there. And I know a number of photographers, especially videographers, that use it all the time. And yes, setting the Kelvin value is a great way. Because say you know your scene is lit at 5600 Kelvin, you can put 5600 in there and you can pretty much match it, right? But I just, I don't like this kind of goofy way. I, I, I'm just not a fan of this. Um, and that's just my own personal, it's my own personal thing, okay? Let me go now to my favorite, the one that I love, love, love the most, the best one of all, and that's custom. Custom white balance, okay? And that is really easy to set. All of you, if you've not done this before, one homework assignment I want you to do is to practice setting a custom white balance. The only problem with custom white balance is that sometimes photographers forget to take it out of that when they change their scene and then they wonder why things look so weird, right? So let's try that now. I'm gonna go ahead, we are going to use this bullhorn. I'm gonna show you a before and after and I'm gonna show you how to set the custom white balance, okay? So here we go, we got the camera right here. Let's look at the back of the camera. We're going into white balance, we're gonna go right into the custom. You have three customs, you see that? Here's the first custom right here, okay? Now, before I do that, let's take a look at that bullhorn. Look at that, you see that? Look at that, yuck, that looks terrible, just terrible, okay? But let's fix that problem. So what you wanna do when you set up a custom white balance is you need a white card or a, wh a white piece of paper works great. I happen to have one right here, <laughs> right? So here we go, okay? So I have a white piece of paper and what you do is you wanna hold that piece of paper as close as you can to where the light source is hitting your subject. As close as you can to fill the reader on the camera that reads it. Let me show you. So let me go into the camera menu. Let's go into white balance, into custom. Okay, we're in custom right here, right? We've selected it, boom. Now it's saying shutter, new white balance. You see that right there? And so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the shutter, boom. Look at that, did you see that? Did, did you see how much that changed? Okay, so now that it changed, now that it changed, I'm gonna hit okay to set it. And that's my new white balance. Check this out, okay? I'm gonna use the bullhorn again. All right, we're gonna use the bullhorn again. Here we go, look at this. Look at that, do you see that? Just by setting the custom white balance to this piece of paper, I made the object show exactly the correct colors, which in this case was white and red. That's why you would wanna use custom white balance. Um, and that custom white balance is gonna look perfect for anything that I shoot on one condition, that these lights stay the same, okay? But if you go and you add, right, if you go and you add a different light, let's say you add a, you know, a warmer light, and now you got this, 
it's going to change things around a little bit. So keep that in mind. Um, and we'll come back to that in video in just a second. So that's that's custom white balance. All right. OK, how are we doing on the stream? I'm just going to check and see if we're still live. OK, yes, you can also use a gray card, but I prefer white. Um, OK, so let's go to the next thing, which is well, we did that. OK, good, good, good. Your homework. OK, well, before we go to that, let's talk about three options for your auto white balance, because I said auto white balance was the first one, and that's the most common. Fujifilm released an update recently, I mean, in the past couple of years, that allows and adds two extra options for auto white balance. And a lot of people are confused by that. Let me show you what they are. All right, so if you go into your white balance, look at this. Here's auto, okay? That's the regular auto that you we all know and love and use and all of that. That's auto, that's number one, okay? The second one is white priority, and the third one is ambience priority. See that? So there's three different ones, okay? Let me explain what they are. White priority, think of um, white priority. White priority is basically going to give your images a slightly cooler tone under tungsten lighting, okay? So both white priority and ambience priority, both of those are meant to be used indoors, generally under tungsten light, and white priority is the cooler of the two. It's going to do this. It's like washing your socks with some bleach, okay? You see that right there? It gets the whitest whites. It cools it off. I'm making sure that's closed. Um, <laughs> I have so much crap in this studio. So it's it's like washing with bleach, and it, it makes just everything very cool and brightest whites, brightest whites, okay? That is um, white priority. You see that right there, okay? So the next one is ambience priority, and that one is identical to white priority in, in terms of the situation you would use it indoors with tungsten. The only difference is with ambient priority, you get a slightly warmer white, a slightly warmer white. That's the only difference. They're very similar. You almost have to be pixel peeping, but you can see it if you're shooting indoors under tungsten lights, okay? So because of all this, you have homework. You have homework to do this weekend, all right? Um, first, I want you to shoot three images. The first is auto white balance. Just put it in auto. The second one is use white priority white balance. And the third, do ambient priority white balance. And then take a look at the JPEGs. Take a look at the JPEGs. Now, very, very, very important, okay? Most important thing of all. You ready? All right. It only affects JPEG files and not really the raw files. If you're shooting in raw, all right, meaning that if your camera is set up here, right, if you go up to image quality and you go up to right here and you're shooting in either fine or normal, okay, if it's just those two, you better damn well get your white balance correct in camera. Got it? It's really important. However, if you're shooting in JPEG raw, JPEG raw, or just raw, that's what the little white balance dropper is for in Lightroom and Photoshop. And basically remember, raw images, there it is no image. It's the sensor data. It's just the sensor data. And it doesn't know or care about things like contrast, clarity, white balance, sharpening, none of that, all right? So just keep that in mind, that everything I've told you in this video really is for two groups of people. The first group are the people that I only shoot JPEG. Those groups of people better get their white balance squared away ASAP, all right? Second group of people, very important, <laughs> video shooters, video shooters. Why would you think that white balance would be so critical to video? Well, think about it. The camera's moving all the time. Scene to 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 scene, okay? Think about it. 
Think about it, right? And so because of that, if, for example, you're not vlogging, but you're actually shooting indoors somewhere and you have, you know, like lighting like this, you've got, you've got this kind of, you know, warm, warm light, right? And your character walks across the room and your camera pans with the character. Remember, it's moving. It's constantly changing. It's constantly moving. So your camera's panning with the character. And now the character walks next to a window where suddenly this light, pff, it's not there anymore. Sunlight is coming in at 5,600 Kelvin, okay? So now it's changed. And the problem is it's not a static photo that you can open up in Photoshop and go, oh, well, that this photo was taken by the window, but this photo was taken over with this light, so I can just change it here. It's difficult to do that in a movie because the camera's moving. You've got all kinds of stuff moving. And unless you're going to do motion masking, and please don't tell me to get into motion masking, I'd have to make six videos on that, on how to do that in post-production. You can fix that stuff later on, but the best thing you could do with shooting movies is to find out when you're looking at your scene, okay, where am I primarily shooting this scene? Is it indoors, is it outdoors? What are the lights in the scene? And then set a custom white balance for that and leave your camera on a custom white balance all the time for that scene. When you're done shooting the scene and you go to set up another scene for your movie, then Set up another custom white balance. Remember, it's not rocket science doing this. All you have to do is grab a piece of paper, put it in front of the camera, boom, boom, you're done, right? So it's simple, simple to do, but it's so important. Does that mean that the white balance police are gonna come after you if you shoot a video in automatic white balance? No, but what is going to happen is that when you take it into post-production, you're gonna notice that as you're moving from scene to scene, the colors are shifting and changing and it, it looks odd. So strong recommendation, if you're shooting movies, set it to a custom white balance. But you know, if you're vlogging and it really doesn't matter, that type of stuff, then don't worry about it. Leave it in automatic all the time. It really makes no difference, okay? So that here endeth the lesson for right now. Um, I'm gonna check in with the audience. I, what I do with these live streams, and I probably should have said this from the beginning, I, I teach the stuff first, right? And then I get to the questions and the answers. And the reason that I teach the stuff first is because most of the people who are gonna be watching this are gonna be seeing it weeks, months, years later, and I don't want them, you know, I want them to get their information first and straight up. So anyway, um, those of you who are watching this and it's any time in the future beyond October, what is it, October 29th, we're done with the lesson. You can go now. Go watch another YouTube video. For those of you that are here live, the really cool people, I'm going to get to you right now. I'm going to have a few Q&As and then I, I got to go. I got to carve pumpkins. My kids are waiting. So let me, let me go this right now. Let's see here. Who do we have today? Christy. How you doing, Christy? I'm so glad you're here. Awesome. Awesome. Hanny from Spain. We got Jan. We've got uh, Jeremy. Can you save custom white balance to your presets on an XT3? To which presets, uh, Jeremy? I'm not sure. Are you talking about just the regular? In other words, if you turn the camera off, will the custom white balance be there? No. I Yes. Yes, it will be there in that case, but I don't think you can necessarily save it to a full-blown preset that I'm not sure about. Um, haven't tested that one. Good question there. We should do a, a thing, you know, stump pal to tech, ask a question that I can't answer. And you know, and you get like a uh, five points. If the, if I were doing this live, like in a, you know, in an auditorium, I'd be throwing candy out to, to you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> these type of things. All right. Um, hold on a second. Let me get back. Do, 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 do. Let me just get a nice little title slide here. Okay. Um, Ricky from the Philippines, how you doing? Okay, does anybody, is white priority good for snow? Okay, very good question. It, um, who asked that? Florian asked it. All right, is white priority good for snow? Um, not, no, not really. I, I would not use it for snow. And because it's meant for indoors incandescent lighting, okay? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it for snow. Now, your second part of your question is, what can I do to not get gray in snow? 
Well, honestly, is I would if, <laughs> I would use the exposure compensation dial on the camera and adjust that to get the scene a little bit on the brighter to get the, the snow more white. The camera's going to want to try and make all things a neutral gray and snow can really screw it up. So if you can use the exposure compensation dial and you can always try setting a, you know, aim the camera down at the snow and see if you can set a custom white balance off the snow, you know, assuming that it's not dirty, it's white snow. Um, that would be how I would probably handle that. Yeah. Um, hello from, hi Sayak from India. Uh, what do you do when the camera's further back from the object? You do the best you can. Obviously, if, you know, let's say you're shooting someone on stage, right? And there's all kinds of lighting in there. That's a really tough one. In that case, I would probably just leave it on auto, but I would shoot raw. That way you're, you're covered. Because if one of your shots, let's say it's in a theater and suddenly they have, you know, it's, it's a scene about Batman and suddenly they're in the Batcave with red lighting and it's all weird. Well, those shots you can take into Lightroom and fix really easily. So it just depends. But if you're shooting a movie, that's a little more difficult. And sometimes you have to just guess. I would probably use the, um, the Kelvin reading and just kind of guess. And when you've been doing it long enough, you'll kind of know. You'll be able to go into a room and go, yeah, it's about 5,600 in here. And, and so I would adjust it in that way. If I were shooting movies, if I were shooting stills, I would most likely just use auto white balance and be done with it for in, the, in that case, yeah. Um, does the auto white lock back button? Okay, yeah, I didn't mention that. So there's an auto, you can lock your auto white balance using one of the buttons or assign it to a custom button. And yeah, it, you can hold that button in and that will lock the white balance. And yes, that can work for shooting movies. So for example, if you know that you're panning this way and then you're panning back, right? You could, in fact, hold down the, the lock button, lock the white balance in, and that would be a great way to do it, sure. Sure. Um, okay, let's see here. A couple more and then I have to run. Tara, how you doing from Germany? Nice to, nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, yeah, you don't want yellow snow, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking here at these questions. Um, and I do read all the comments. Um, I read everything. I can't get to all of them, but I read them all. And I am so glad you're all here. I hope everybody's doing great. We have Halloween Sunday. I don't know if where you are, they celebrate Halloween. We do a huge thing for Halloween. I'm going to try and get some B-roll and, and put it in a, in a video if I can, although I'm running out of time <laughs> to do all this stuff. How do I, let's see. Um, I don't have additional options for auto white balance. Why? I don't know. I would need more information. What kind of camera do you have, et cetera? I, I can't answer that. Um, see why do custom white balance photos seem different from seeing with the naked eye okay that's a it's a good question but it's a it's a tough question because color the art of seeing color varies from person to person to person right i mean that's it is very subjective and the biggest cause of what you're saying is most likely monitor or screen calibration and if you're editing you really should calibrate your monitor for the correct color. You do it once, maybe every few months, and it's a simple, maybe five to 10 minute process on how to do it. Would you like, a, would you guys like a video on how to, how to calibrate your monitor or your computer for the correct colors when you're editing? Would that be a video you'd like? Because if it is, let me know, and I will definitely make one on that. I have two different ways of color correcting on monitors, and I'd be happy to teach that for sure. Yeah, but I can't, I can't get into all the details on that right now, of course. Um, okay, uh, Daniel, Daniel's asking, what is the white balance? Watch this video from the beginning and also do a search on my channel for white balance. I actually have a few videos specifically on white balance, and I think it'll help answer that for you. Um, okay. Monitor calibration. All right, Christy, I agree with you. We're, we're going to do a monitor calibration video. All right. I think, I think just hearing that is, is important. Um, I would say, okay, Jamie asks if you're shooting in sunlight and moving back and forth between the shade and the sunlight, what white balance do I suggest? I would balance it for the sun. That's how I would do it. 
um, because the shade, assuming you're still outside, it's kind of still the same light temperature. It's just, you know, it's darker, <laughs> right? Um, what really comes into play is if you're going from sunset to midday or you're going from indoors with different bulb temperatures. That, that affects it a lot more. Yeah. Um, okay. So, folks, I honestly do have to go. This was going to be a short one today, the shortest one. Um, what are we at? We're at, five, okay, yeah. So, um, I need to... I do. This is literally what I'm carving with my kids. I'm going straight from here to go do that. So um, ha listen, have a wonderful weekend. If you haven't seen it, I did a Fast Friday video. So there's another video from me that came out today. Um, but I am going to finally be leaving the studio now and getting out of here. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I, I really, really appreciate that you were able to drop by. If you missed any part of this video, it will be rebroadcast automatically by YouTube and all of the comments that are in here are going to be saved and also rebroadcast. So I will see them for sure. Um, in the meantime, have a safe, have a wonderful and have an awesome weekend. Get out, take some pictures and I'll see you in a video next week. Take care.